Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I'll be breaking down the stats for the upcoming Temerian Deep Space Cruiser. As always, chapters are listed down below. First up, for those of you curious as to where this ship originates, it is from Season 5 Episode 2 of The Next Generation, the Darmok episode. Now, that is not the only time we got to see this ship model in action. It was used by several different alien species in The Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager. In most cases, the only change was the color of the lighting coming from the nacelles, and hopefully when we get this, hopefully they give us customization options to let us match the colors that these other alien species had when they were using the ship model. And for those of you that want the Tamarian in an STO, you'll be able to get it for free by participating in the 2023 Winter Event, which is running from December 5th, 2023 up through January 4th of 2024. You can earn this by playing any of the events I have listed on screen once every 20 plus hours, 20 times over the course of the event. So basically, just play for 20 of the 30 days, doing at least one of the events listed on screen once a day, and you'll be able to get the ship entirely for free. Now, if you don't want to go through and get it for free, there is going to be a buyout option for it. And that buyout option is going to cost you a thousand lobby crystals, but each day of participation you get, we'll take that down by 50 lobby. Now, as I said in a prior video, a thousand lobby crystals is quite expensive. That's about 185 bucks. So each day of progress you can get is going to knock about nine bucks off the buyout cost. So try to get as many days of progress as you can before you buy the ship out. And long term, it will be put into either the MUDs or Phoenix stores but that most likely will not happen until at least 2025. And heading into the stats side of things, the Tamarian has a hull modifier of 1.4, a shield modifier of 1.2, a base turn rate of 12, which I'll note is the second best of all cruisers in the game. The only one better than this is the legendary Akira, which has a base turn rate of 15. This has an impulse modifier of 0.14, which is on the lower side, and it has an inertia rating of 35, meaning that with all the mobility stats it has, it's going to move quite well, but when you go to stop, it is going to have a bit of a drift. So just keep that in mind when you're flying it around. And for the power bonuses, it has plus 10 to weapons and shield power. And heading over to the layout, it has a 5-3 weapon setup, but it is unable to use dual heavy cannons or dual cannons. It has four device slots, Console-wise, it has five engineering, two science, and four attack. So you can do up to seven isomags on this once you upgrade it to T6X2. And if you're doing a locator or exploiter setup, then you would have your lurker console plus five exploiters or locators. It has a cruiser mastery package, which is nothing special. It has access to all four cruiser commands. And even though it doesn't have a commander command spec seat, it does have access to the Command Inspiration abilities, and both the Cruiser Commands and Command Inspiration abilities have been renamed to fit the Tamarian theme, similar to what we saw earlier this year with the Hesperian. And for those themed names, let's start off with the Cruiser Commands. For Strategic Maneuvering, it is called Marab with Sails Unfurled. For Shield Frequency Modulation, it is Zinda at Peace before the Ordeal. For weapon system efficiency, it's Basminti, his secrets kept close. And for attract fire, Uzani, his army with fist open. And for the command inspiration abilities, for turn the tide, it is Calamus at Bahar. For against all odds, it's Zinda, his face black, his eyes red. And for battle preparation, Basminti, when he pulled back the veil. So good theme tie in there. And it's always fun to, to see them do this. The abilities are the exact same as the, the normal ones. It's just that they've been renamed just to fit the theme. And heading over to the bridge officer side of things, the Tamarian has a commander engineer with no specialization on it, a lieutenant commander tactical, a lieutenant commander universal with command, a lieutenant science with intel, and an ensign universal. Now, even though the Tamarian doesn't have a full commander spec seat, it is still being given access to the command inspiration abilities, and this is not a new development. They've been doing this since the Hesperian, which went live earlier this year. It's a nice way for them to increase the value of these ships without giving them a full specialization seat. 
It would be nice if they gave them a full specialization seat, but these event ships have to be a little bit weaker than the sea store offerings as to not devalue the paid ships, because at the end of the day, Cryptic wants us to have a reason to go out and buy the better ships in the sea store. And on the topic of better ships, I do want to go through now and compare this ship to some of the other offerings out there. And as always, I'm going to be using Fluffle's Sortable Filterable Ship List, which I'll have linked down in the description for those of you that want to mess around with it on your own. The first comparison I want to do here is against other ships that have the exact same spec combo, so Lieutenant Commander Command plus Lieutenant Intel. And the one that I found that most resembled the Temerian is the Zal Heavy Cruiser. This is a Lobie ship from like 2015, I believe, so it's pretty old. It has a 4-4 weapon setup, and it has a fixed Ensign Engineer, whereas the Temerian has a 5-3 weapon setup plus an Ensign Universal. So the Temerian is a nice upgrade over the Zal. For the other comparisons, I've heard some feedback from y'all that you don't want me to just stick to ships of the similar spec. You want me to just, you know, look at more options out there. And that's what I've got set up here for do tanks and torps. But I've already done a take of this. I do want to just save you guys some time. The Temerian is a very solid platform. If you're a beginner player, the Temerian is a very capable ship that will get you through whatever content it is you're trying to do. However, as soon as you're willing to pick up a sea store ship, a fleet ship, a legendary ship, or even a premium ship, you are going to have options out there that are so much better for whatever play style you're going for. Again, the Temerian's not bad. It's just that the event ships are designed to be a bit weaker and we can really feel it with how the Temerian is set up this time. If you're looking to do a do platform, there's so many better options in the sea store and even over at the fleet shipyard that you can pick up that are going to be better. If you're looking to pick up a single target platform, the Terran Cygnus, the Terran Hydra, the fleet Soyuz, all of those do really well for single target. The Fleet Soyuz, Intel Heavy Frigate, and the Terran Hydra both do really good with Surgical Strikes. They also can do Beam Overload. And another platform you may want to, may want to consider for Beam Overload now is the Terran Cygnus. The Terran Cygnus was not well received when it first was introduced into the game in the 12th Anniversary Bundle, but with the Isomags it has regained quite a bit of value and does hold up quite well for a single target build now. The Fleet Norway is also a solid option. It's got a full Commander Command spec seat versus the Temerian's Lieutenant Commander. And obviously the Legendary Avenger just is crazy good. And I know some of you are going to say, well, why wasn't there this negativity about the Hesperian? The Hesperian could run dual heavy cannons. The Hesperian had a spec combo that is more do friendly in my opinion. The Intel pilot combo is a bit more valuable on a on a do platform versus the lieutenant commander command plus lieutenant intel if the command was a full commander command spec it might be a little bit different but given how the terrain set up and the limitations it has with the the cannons even the hesperian is a better platform for do for, do. for tanks pretty much holds the same there's better platforms that you can get from the sea store from your fleet. And if you are willing to pick up some of the larger bundles, you know, you can get the sticks Terran Dreadnought Cruiser, which is a originally a lockbox ship. You can get that on account wide unlock by getting the 13th anniversary bundle. And that sticks Terran Dreadnought Cruiser is in my opinion, the best tanking platform that we currently have in the game. It's got pets on it that have fire at will with suppression barrage and attack pattern beta. So it's just throwing out a massive amount of debuff. Again, the Temerian is still capable. You know, if you're a beginner player, you can make a very effective build on it. But I'm just saying, as soon as you are willing to even drop 30 bucks into the game, these platforms, so much better. The, the Fleet Justice here, you could even get for free using the Fleet Ship modules you get from your reputations. That's got a full Commander Command. That's pretty, pretty nice. It does have a 4-4 weapon setup. 
But if you're doing a tank build, you're doing beam arrays anyways, so the 4-4 weapon setup doesn't matter as much for that playstyle. And for torpedoes, you know, again, the sticks is in the 13th bundle, but you know what else is in the 13th bundle and also available to purchase on its own for 30 bucks? The Terran Eagle. The fact is, if you're looking to set up a torp build, they are quite expensive to go through and fully set up. And one of the ships you're likely to pick up along the way is the Terran Eagle, because it has a really good console on it for torpedo builds. Except the Eagle is also currently the top performing torpedo platform in the game. So if you're really interested in that playstyle, which is not very beginner friendly, you may as well go with one of the better platforms like the Terran Eagle. So I know that's probably not the comparison everyone was hoping for, but I, I think the, the main point again is that the Temerian is capable. It's, it's a, really, it's a good platform. It's just that as soon as you're willing to put any money in, there's just such better options out there. Moving on, the next thing I want to take a look at are the console and starship trait. However, I do have to note that as of me recording this video on November 30th, Cryptic has not released any tooltips or statements regarding the performance of either the console or starship trait. As such, we don't know how good or bad these items are, and we're not likely going to know until players have them on hand and have been able to test them once the event goes live on December 5th. Now, personally, I am not going to go through and buy out the event day one to pick this ship up. Again, the buyout cost is a thousand lobby crystals or about 185 bucks. I don't think the ship is worth that. So I'm going to play the event out, get it for free. And that's what I would recommend that all of you go through and do as well. However, I am going to go through and use the buyout over on the triple test server as soon as they put it over there, because over on triple, you can copy over an infinite amount of resources meaning that I can copy an infinite amount of lobby over and get it over there for free to test out. So stay tuned for that, but don't be surprised if it takes a little bit of time after release for proper information regarding the trait and console to get out there. And next up, I want to take a look at the console, the Polarity Coil Generator. This has a passive effect on it that when you fire at a ship that has shields offline, the console will deal a large amount of kinetic damage to that foe, but it can only happen once every 10 seconds. And the clicky here is going to neutralize and weaken shields of foes within five kilometers of the targeted foe. The question there is how long is the shield disable going to be and how potent is the weakened shield debuff going to be? So that's where having a tooltip here would be very handy, but for whatever reason, Cryptic doesn't like to give us tooltips. And the starship trait is Darmok and Jalad. Upon your first weapon hit against an unshielded facing on a foe, you will cause a long-lasting debuff to the foe's outgoing damage, and you're going to give yourself an instant captain ability cooldown reduction. The restriction here is that this trait can only trigger once per enemy ship. So there is a limitation there that's going to hurt in some situations, but it'll be interesting to see just how much of a debuff that is to foe's outgoing damage, and what type of cooldown reduction that is going to provide. If the numbers are good, this might be a decent trait to consider for like a tank build, but without numbers, it's really hard to say. And for the Admiralty card, this has 60 engineering, 21 science, 45 tack, and the special is going to ignore plus or minus engineering from events. And next up, I wanna take a look at the strengths and weaknesses of the Temerian Deep Space Cruiser. Starting off with the strengths, it has a 5-3 weapon setup, it has access to Command Inspiration abilities, it can run Concentrate Firepower 3 for Torp builds, if you're doing a tank build it can do Suppression Barrage 1, the Command Intel spec combo is generally a higher performing spec combo to have on ships, so that's good to see. It's got decent mobility and defense stats, really good turn rate, and it can run up to 7 isomags. Now the weaknesses. It's got that 5-3 setup, but it can't run dual heavy cannons or dual cannons. Cryptic likes to lock them out from cruisers like this, which is rather unfortunate at this point of the game, and hopefully we'll see them loosen or remove those restrictions eventually. I know that dual cannons are not everyone's favorite thing, 
but it is great to have as an option on ships just to give people a route to get a high DPS build on them. This does have a commander engineer seat with no specialization, which is not the greatest commander seat to have. Commander engineer seats without a specialization generally aren't that popular nowadays. The lieutenant science and intel seat does mean that you're going to be making some hard choices. You know, are you going to want to run some of the science abilities there, or are you going to want to run the low cooldown intel uncons or override subsystem safeties? And if you want to run a Lieutenant Commander Command ability, you do lose out on the ability to run a Gravwell 1 or a second Lieutenant Commander attack ability. So if you wanted to do Beam Overload 3 and Torp Spread 3, then you wouldn't be able to do a com Lieutenant Commander Command ability in that slot. There just isn't room with it with how the Bridge Officer setup is. And the next thing I want to take a look at are some builds that I would consider putting on this ship. So I'm going to be focusing on a beam overload build, a cannon scatter volley build, a tank build, and a torpedo build. And I'm not going to be going over the gear because as with any other build in stow, when you're transferring a build from one ship to the other, the gear is basically the same. You're just moving it over to the other build. What matters is the bridge officer layout. So that is what I'm going to focus on here. Just to give you guys some examples of what type of bridge officer setups you'd want to go with for different build types. The first build I want to take a look at is for Beam Overload. For the Commander Engineer, I would do Emergency Powered Engines 1, Ox to Structural Integrity Field 1. Ox to Sif here has a really low cooldown, so it's a really good proc for the Boimler Effect trait. Then Emergency Powered Weapons 3 and Directed Energy Modulation 3. For the Lieutenant Commander Attack, Chemo 1, Attack Pattern Beta 1, and Beam Overload 3. For the Lieutenant Science with Intel, Viral Impulse Burst 1, which is a really nice unconventional systems proc, and then Override Subsystem Safeties 2. For the Lieutenant Commander Universal with Command, I would run that as Attack, run Distributed Targeting 1, Cannon Scatter Volley 1. Even if you don't have cannons on, the point of this would be for the Preferential Targeting trait, if you have that, that's off of the low BNX or the legendary NX that gives you a buff for beam overload when you hit CSV. Yeah, you don't have to have a cannon on, you just hit CSV and it gives you plus 100% cat 1 for beam overload. Then there's a Torp Spread 3 because I would assume most of you would have like the Dark Matter or one of the Maelstrom variants on. And for the Ensign Universal, I would have that as a science with the Tractor Beam 1 because that's another good low cooldown unconventional systems proc. And next up is the Cannon Scatter Volley build. This has a lot of similarities with the Beam Overload build. The Commander Engineer is the exact same. Emergency Powered Engines 1, Aux to Sif 1, Emergency Powered Weapons 3, and Directed Energy Modulation 3. For the Lieutenant Commander Attack, Distributed Targeting 1, Attack Pattern Beta 1 for the debuff, and Cannon Scatter Volley 2. For the Lieutenant Science with Intel, same as Beam Overload, Foul Impulse Burst 1 with Override Subsystem Safeties 2. For the Lieutenant Commander Universal with Command, I would set that as Attack. In the Ensign slot, have Beam Overload 1. You can use that as a competitive engine proc to get a speed boost as needed. Then I would do Chemocyte Laced Weapons 2 and Torp Spread 3. And for the Ensign Universal with Science, I would run that with Tractor Beam 1. Now, again, like I've said a few times, the ship can't do dual cannons or dual heavy cannons, unfortunately, but... You could probably still do a single cannon setup on this if you wanted. I don't know what the performance would be like, but I know some of you would be into trying something a bit different. So if you want to do single cannons on this, then this setup should work perfectly fine. And next up, for those of you wanting to set this up as a tank build on the Commander Engineer, I would do Emergency Powered Engines 1. And then for the second slot, I would do either Ox to Bat 1 for the Cold Hearted trait and also cooldown reduction if you want to do Ox to Bat. And the alternative there is just Ox to Sif again, like with the prior builds. Then Emergency Powered Weapons 3 and Reverse Shield Polarity 3. For the Lieutenant Commander Attack, I would do Torp Spread 1, Attack Pattern Beta 1, and Fire at Will 3. And then you're going to be getting higher Fire at Will uptime by using the Entwined Tactical Matrices trait off of the Gagarin with this Torp Spread here. So you'll have to mainly time your Torps, but... You can, if you do it, you can have really good uptime on fire at will. The Lieutenant Science with Intel is Viral Impulse Burst 1, and then I would do Ionic Turbulence 1 here just to get some more Uncon on this build. And the issue with the tank running OSS is OSS brings uncertainty 
you you don't want to be in a situation where you're drawing a ton of threat and it's a crucial point in the run for your team and then oss knocks like your shields offline or something that that's just not a fun time so for for the tank builds i generally don't run oss nowadays for the lieutenant commander universal with command i would set that up as a science i would do tractor beam one uh, and then for the second slot here would be rally point marker which is a command ability it's a nice area of effect uh, heal basically that you can drop in and it also clears debuffs for yourself and any other allies that fly into it. So for a tank, pretty handy ability to have on. And then of course, suppression barrage, which is what makes command the best specialization for tank builds. Unfortunately, the ship can only run suppression barrage one, but that's better than nothing. Suppression barrage is nice because any foes that you hit with your weapons are going to have lower damage output. So pretty good to have on and makes this ship a bit more capable than the average cruiser for tanking. And then for the Ensign Universal, I would set that as attack and I would personally run a chemo there to go with the Torp spread, but you could set that as whatever you wanted if you want to do something different. And sadly, as I have noted here, if you want to do Suppression Barrage 1, which I would highly recommend for tanking, you're not going to be able to run a grab well. That's just the trade-off that you're going to have to make with this ship. And for those of you wanting to turn this into a torp build, it is capable given that it has access to Concentrate Firepower 3, but I'll tell you right now, it's not going to be the best platform for torpedoes. You can make it work if you want, but that Commander Engineer with no specialization on it is really hurting the build. You're going to have a lot of space wasted due to that, so just keep that in mind. Now, for the Commander Engineer, I would do Emergency Powered Engines 1, Structural Integrity Collapse 2, Let It Go 3, and Emit Unstable Warp Bubble 3. So let me show you those abilities in game here, because some of those you guys probably have not really messed around with before. Uh, Structural Integrity Collapse, I think this is a lockbox ability, and you can buy it off the exchange, but it's a mark on target debuff. Um, so you just drop this on your target, and it'll be a debuff that's physical and kinetic damage and that'll last for 15 seconds on your target. Let it go three. That is another debuff, and that one you can pick up in the Winter Event Store with the Winter Event Currencies, and that is going to apply up to a minus 160 debuff on your foe. It builds up by minus eight every second for 20 seconds, so pretty good. I, I would say that would be worth considering on a ship like this, and then for the Commander slot, I would do Emit Unstable Warp Bubble 3. That doesn't really do much for you, but the point of it is, is that it is an unconventional systems proc. If you didn't want to do that, you could also go through and do like an Ox to Sif 3 or an Ox to Inertial Dampeners 3 if you wanted some mobility. The Ox to Sif, of course, for the heal it provides and also the trigger it is for the Boimler effect. Now for Lieutenant Commander Tack here, I would do Fire at Will 1 and Cannon Scatter Volley 1. The point of these on a Torp build is to trigger the Entwined Tactical Matrices trait. So when you hit Fall 1, that trait will give you a Torp Spread 1. And when you hit the CSV 1, that's going to give you a Torp Spread 1. So these are here to give you Torp Spreads on the build. Then I would do High Yield 3. And for the Lieutenant Science with Intel, Viral Impulse Burst 1 for the Uncon. And Ionic Turbulence 1 again for the Uncon. And for the Lieutenant Commander Universal with Command, I would set that as attack, do Chemosite 1, Mind Dispersal Pattern Beta 1, and then Concentrate Firepower 3. And for the Ensign Universal with Science, I would do a Tractor Beam 1. That has multiple use cases. That's going to be an unconventional systems proc. And that's also going to trigger the Rapid Emitting Armaments trait from the Legendary Dideridex. So overall, this would work as a Torp build. You're clearly missing out on an Attack Pattern Beta. Not really much you can do there about that. You can't drop the CSV down to an Ensign slot. Same for the Mine Beta there. So there's just not really a way to, to fit an Attack Pattern Beta on this build here, unfortunately. So that would work. But like I said, I think that there's better options to go for if you're looking to set up a Torp build. Uh, the, the Terran Eagle, again, that's, that's a ship that I've highly praised throughout the year as being a very, very capable Torp platform. And lastly, I want to go over my final thoughts about the Temerian. I think it's an okay platform, but there's clearly a few things that do hold it back. 
Most notably is the lack of dual cannon and dual heavy cannon support. We've got more than enough mobility power creep nowadays that basically any ship in the game can handle dual heavy cannons. So I would just in general like to see that restriction removed so that cruisers like this have another route towards having a higher performance potential in end game content. The other big flaw is the non-specialization commander engineer seat. Commander engineer seats, like I said earlier, really not that valuable right now. And I do think it would benefit Cryptic to release a fleet version of this ship that moves the command seat over to that commander engineer. That would give this platform more long-term potential and certainly increase the value of this ship long-term and maybe make it a ship more desirable when it gets put into the mud store or the Phoenix store a couple years from now. Now, even though this ship does clearly have a few flaws, that doesn't mean that it's bad. Most things Cryptic release have a flaw somewhere here or there, but they're still capable of doing any content in the game. Even with this ship, the Temerian, once you build it right, and if you're flying it right, you'll be able to go into the hardest elite content that this game has, and you'll be able to clear it perfectly fine. So don't let my negative thoughts there deter you. It's something that is still going to be more than capable. Now, the trade and console, like I said earlier, are still unknowns because Cryptic doesn't like to give us the tooltips in the blogs, so the value of those is going to have to be assessed once players have those on hand after the winter event goes live next week. Overall, for a free ship, this is pretty good. I would recommend playing the event to pick it up for free if you're able to, but I would not pay a thousand lobby crystals for it. If you find yourself in a position where you would have to buy it out, I would go through and take a look at some of the sea store ships instead, because some of the recent sea store ships honestly are going to be better anyways. If you're looking for a tanking platform, I would say to take a look at the Justice Seer that went live earlier this year. That's a $30 sea store ship that honestly performs quite well for tank builds. If you're looking for a torp build or a torp platform, take a look at the Terran Eagle. That is the top torp build or the top torp platform currently in the game and it's a $30 sea store ship. If you're looking for a really good energy weapon platform, take a look at the Hydra. The Hydra is really, really good. And if you're willing to spend a bit more, like if you were actually serious about willing to spend a thousand lobby to pick the ship up, then, you know, I would say to take a look at some of the legendary bundles because you can go through and pick up, say, the legendary battle cruiser bundle for 78 bucks during the sale. So that's half of what that thousand lobby buyout cost is going to be, given that you need about 185 bucks worth of master keys to get a thousand lobbies. So, yeah, if you find yourself in a position where you need to buy out more than a few days, I would probably just take a look at some of the C store offerings instead, because I think you'll get a lot more for your money than you would from going in and buying out the Tamarian. And that's going to be it for today. As always, thank you to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. See you guys around.